Hey, smart Christians. There's a really interesting text that helps us to see that Jesus is in fact God. For some people, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a bother to them, but we've got to go with what the scriptures say. This is in John 1, and no, it's not the passage in John 1 that you're probably thinking of. But while we're on that topic, let's go to John 1. Let's look at the passage, John 1, 1. Let's go there first, since that's going to be an issue that people are going to want to talk about. In John 1, 1, you know the passage, in the beginning was the word. And I want to just remember this, this how he starts this off, in the beginning. I'm going to come back to that and tie it in just a little bit. But the word was God, the word was with God, and the word was was God. I want you to notice something that we've talked about before in the Greek, and this is not really my main point, but I want you to see this, that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we've talked about this before, that in the Greek, we've got these two nouns. One is a subject, one is what's called the predicate nominative. The subject is obviously what the subject is, we know about that, but the predicate nominative, what that does is it describes what the category or what the class or what the subject is. So in this case, the word is a subject. The predicate nominative is theos. And so what does theos do? It describes what the word is. Now, because of that, it's important to recognize since the word is Jesus, then who is he saying is God? Jesus. And, and add even extra emphasis, if we look at the third clause, kai theos ain halagos, we'll notice that the theos is actually shifted to the front or before Lagos. Why? Not to say that, and God was the word. No, it's to give emphasis to what the word is. Now, there is no real confusion as to who the word is. We know that the word is Jesus. And so to kind of get to my point, I want to drop down to verse 14 and look and see, well, it says one that, and the word became flesh, which is what we said, and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. Remember that as well. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I want to focus on that. The Son is, who is the Word, who became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, which is the glory of, the glory as of the only begotten from the Father. And this word, only begotten, comes from this word over here, monogonos, uh, or monogonos, both are the same. But in this case, he is the only begotten or the unique, the only one of his kind. Why is that interesting? Well, because we're going to look at a passage in just a few verses that's going to use this only begotten again, but it's not the only begotten son. Let's continue. John testified about him and cried out, saying, This is whom, this is he of whom I said, He comes after me and is higher ranked than I am because he exists before me. Well, that's interesting since John was literally physically born before. Jesus was born, but John recognized who Jesus actually is. But he says, verse 17, for the law, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Now here it is. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who was in the bosom of the father. He has explained him. So now this is the interesting part. Notice what he says. The only begotten God who was in the bosom of the Father. Well, who do we know the Father is? We believe the Father is God the Father. The full existence, everything about him, all of his glory, that's the Father who was in heaven. But then who is this only begotten God? Who was in the bosom of the Father? So John is clearly stating that Jesus is the only begotten um, God. And notice the same term here, monogonese. And so Jesus is also called God, the only begotten son, the only begotten God. That's who Jesus is. You can't get away from that. It's not like he was just speaking about God either. And in terms of someone being separate from Jesus, he was not making a distinction. He was making a comparison to say that Jesus is in fact God. And it's no big stretch to say that Jesus is God because even God himself calls Jesus God. Remember in Hebrews 1 verse 8, he says, but of the son, he, that's God, the father says, your throne, O God is forever and ever. So God calls him, Jesus, the son calls him God. Why is this important? Well, because if you don't accept the fact that Jesus is God, well, then we've got a problem because Jesus himself says in John 8, 24, therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, 
for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Well, the I am, first of all, the he is not there in the Greek. But he says, unless you believe that I am, and it's this, this, this term ego eme, and he's not saying that he is something else, but you must believe that I'm the I am. And we know this is how the Jews took it because look what the Jews' response was. So they were saying to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what have I been saying from the beginning? And this is kind of where you can kind of tie in, in the beginning was the word. But then also, what does John say in John 1, 1? In the beginning, the word was with God. Jesus always made it known who he is. He puts it before you. You cannot come back and say, well, I wish he would have said it this way. I wish he would have said it that way. This is how he said it. And we know what he meant because the Jews, even though they weren't followers of his, they knew what he meant. They asked him, or he asked them, why do you want to stone me for what good works? And they said, not because of any good works or bad works, and nothing that you've done, but because you, a man, make yourself out to be God. You call yourself God. And that was a problem that the Jews had. And Jesus didn't deny that. Jesus was clear. And he says, unless you believe that I am, then you will die in your sins. And he reiterates this later on in John 8, 58, before Abraham was, I am. He wasn't saying that he was old. He wasn't saying that he has been living a long time. Unless you believe that I am in John 8, 24, then he comes on that same chapter and states that before Abraham was, I am. Well, how did the Jews take that? They wanted to kill him. Why? Because they believed that he was calling himself God. Why did they believe that he was calling himself God? Because he was. And if you don't believe that he's the I am, if you don't believe that he is the I am that Moses uh, spoke with, that Moses witnessed, the glory of God, which is why we see in John 1, 14, the glory of the only begotten from the Father, the glory of the only one of its kind from the Father, Jesus says, if you don't believe that, then you will die in your sins. As a matter of fact, even in Romans, Paul makes it clear. He says that you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's only one faith, one Lord, one baptism, but one Lord. We're told that the Lord is God. There is no other besides him, according to Moses in Deuteronomy 4. And so the Lord is God. And that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, according to Paul in Romans 10, shall be saved. If you do not call him the Lord, recognize him as the Lord, who is God, Jesus indica indicates clearly that you will die. And the key is, again, interestingly enough, in 1 verse 18 of John, that he is the only begotten God, the only one of his kind, the unique God. Jesus is the unique God. I put on the screen one last time so we can see this. He says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, the unique God who is in the bosom of the Father. And so John is clearly either he's making a mistake or he's being clear that Jesus is God. And so, guys, it's vitally important, even if we don't quite fully understand how this works together, still, it's vitally important that we know that Jesus is God. Amen.